Hi, you're watching Your World Tonight. I'm Sana Khan. Over the next half hour, we get you all the very latest developments from India. First up, a look at what's making headlines. The Indian government lowers the GDP forecast for the current fiscal year to 7.1% from the previous year's 7.6%. BJP's two-day national meet kicks off. Union Minister Prakash Javrekar says demonetization led to reduction in terrorism and Naxalism. India's National Investigation Agency charge sheets captured Pakistani terrorist Bahadur Ali charges him with waging war against the nation. After surviving for the longest time in the valley, Al-Badr terrorists gunned down by security forces in the Badgam district of Jammu and Kashmir. And no end in sight to horrific crimes against women in India. Four men chop off a woman's ears at Bhakpat in Polbound state of Uttar Pradesh after failing to rape her. The first advance estimates released by the Central Statistical Organization earlier today have downgraded the GDP estimates to 7.1% for the current financial year as compared to 7.6% last year. According to Chief Statistician TCA Anant, the estimate is based on data mostly available till the month of October last year, which means the impact of demonetization is yet to be factored in. If the economy grows at 7.1% as predicted, it will be the slowest pace of expansion in three years. The statistic office is expected to revise its estimate for the year when it releases the data for the third quarter. The advance estimate of GDP growth is typically released by the statistics office in the month of February, but this year they've been released a bit earlier as the government plans to bring forward the presentation of the union budget on the first day of February with the impact of demonetization still playing out. Analysts say that at this juncture, it is difficult to estimate the extent to which note ban will hurt the economic growth this year. Some analysts even see the impact stretching to the next financial year, starting 1st of April. The GDP for the full year is estimated at 7.1%. This is compared to 7.6%, which was reported last year for 2015-16. And the GVA in basic prices is estimated at 7%, which is compared to a growth of 7.2% over the last year in the same period. And joining me right now is our business uh, correspondent, Sumit Chaturvedi, who is uh, with us at the moment. Sumit, this is grim news as far as the Indian economy is concerned, because these estimates... If they are correct, then this means that the Indian economy will be growing at the rate which is, you know, at a three-year low. Well, absolutely, Sana. Well, this figure has come today. The Indian economy is likely to deaccelerate to 7.1% in the current financial year as compared to 7.6% growth it, it registered last year. Well, these are estimates, but more, most probably these estimates will hold forth. Well, well, this is as far as the overall situation is concerned. The overall GDP situation is not going to be better uh, in any time soon because the whole process of demonetization to earn the black money has hit the temporary growth of economy economy as well. If we talk about different sectors, only agriculture is the sector where GDP growth will be better. It will be better from 1.2% last year to 4.1% this year on account of good monsoon. But if we talk about other sectors including manufacturing, construction and even financial services, the whole growth will come down. Well, that's a very, very uh, alarming news for the sectors because these sectors were going through bad phase. Many of these sectors were going through bad phase from the last many, many years. Well, the real, uh, the real, uh, this is uh, the uh, impact of demonetization will be visible in the last quarter right. numbers, which will be out by Feb 28. That's, well, that's, precisely, that Sumit, time, uh, that's precisely my next question. You know, these figures are, uh, you know, they've come out with these figures, not taking into account the impact of demonetization because that will only come in in quarter three. But then the big question is how much worse can the GDP forecast or the actual GDP be uh, once we take into account how demonetization has impacted growth? 
So so now we can say that this will be worse from here on because uh, again actual demonetization if we take the uh, into account the impact of demonetization it has surely impacted GDP the overall economy growth in a big way because the cash crunch has led to sharp drop in sales throughout the country because of which there will be contraction in demand and that will lead to further downgrading of economy and contraction in economy. So in the coming few months we should not expect any optimism there should be contraction though small for small time but yes there will be contraction and figures though they are uh, expecting the GDP growth to 7.1 percent they can grow further down if we quote a HSBC report which was released recently they are quoting the GDP figures to between 5 to 5.5 percent which right. is about 2 percent down from the, re uh, the original estimates so keeping that in mind going forward there is no optimism we should have. All right, that's, that's a huge reduction if we go by the uh, report of the banks. Uh, there are chief business correspondent Sumit Chaturvedi. Sumit, thanks so much for joining us with the very latest. And India's National Investigation Agency, or the NIA, on Friday filed a chart sheet before a special court against Bahadur Ali, a Pakistani national who's accused of being a lashkar e toiba terrorist, plotting terror strikes in various Indian cities, including the capital, New Delhi. Raghavendra Rao has more on this. This man is Pakistani national Bahadur Ali, alias Saifullah Mansoor. He stands formally charged with plotting terror strikes in Indian cities. The chart sheet filed by the National Investigation Agency says, In June 2016, Ali with two accomplices used GPS to infiltrate across the line of control and reached Handwara. He then contacted the local lashkar e -Toiba unit. He was then instructed to receive and guide a fresh group of terrorists. But he was arrested before making contact with them. The chart sheet says Ali was directed by his Lashkar contact to join the agitation following Burhan Wani's death. He was to mix with the protesters and throw grenades at the security forces. Following his interrogation, a search operation was launched in Bandi Munabal area of Kupwara and four unidentified terrorists were killed. A huge cache of arms, ammunition, explosives and wireless sets was recovered. Subsequent analysis of Ali's GPS enabled the NIA to establish the route taken by him, the one he took from the line of control to Handwara, as well as the coordinates of the Lashkar's launch pad in Mandakuli. In New Delhi, Raghavendra Rao, Vion. All right, Raghavendra Rao, Vion, senior correspondent, joining me live at this point from the newsroom. Raghavendra, the investigators there have managed to establish a clear Pakistan link as far as this uh, terrorist is concerned. How significant, give, us, uh, give our viewers a sense, is this charge sheet that the NIA has now filed? Sana, the charge sheet is uh, extremely significant and the NIA's investigators have relied primarily on the GPS uh, data, the analysis of the GPS data from the devices which Bahadur Ali and two more terrorists who accompanied him uh, into Indian territory used. Uh, these uh, terrorists were carrying several codes with them which were recovered post Bahadur Ali's arrest. And uh, during his interrogation, when these codes uh, were used to uh, you know, uh, plot maps, uh, those maps started getting deciphered and they revealed the exact route these uh, terrorists took from uh, Pakistan-occupied Kashmir uh, crossing the LOC into India. So essentially the GPS data is, is one of the major uh, evidence and the the fact that the NIA has been able to establish that the GPS devices which these terrorists were using uh, they they uh, establish a trail where you uh, where the investigators uh, have been able to conclusively say that these people crossed over from the okay. POK side into India all right apart from this GPS which as you mentioned it has been the main the most crucial piece of evidence available with the investigators Raghavendra a lot of other uh, pieces of evidence have been found uh, with uh, Bahadur Ali. Give us a sense of 
what are all those pieces of evidence that the investigators now have and how crucial could it be to nab perhaps his accomplices? A sizable number of arms and ammunitions uh, uh, and explosives have been recovered. Wireless sets have been recovered. Uh, all of these, some of these items have Pakistani markings. A bag containing items of uh, daily use in medicines. Several of those items having uh, uh, the uh, markings of made in, pa make it made in Pakistan on them. Uh, these are the critical bits of evidences which the NIA is banking on in, in uh, pursuing its case against Bahadur Ali and coupled with the uh, GPS data analysis, the agency is uh, extremely hopeful of securing a conviction in this case. All right, Raghavendra, we leave it at that. Thanks so much for joining us and sharing the latest inputs on this big story that we've been tracking. And we move on uh, to more news from Jammu and Kashmir, where a gun battle was on early in the morning. Security forces managed to kill an Al-Badr terrorist, Muzaffar Iqbal Naiku, in, Machau, in Machu area of the Badgam district there. Two Jawans were injured in the operation as well. Naiku was the longest surviving militant in the valley. He'd been active for about 15 years now. A close associate of slain lashkar e Commander Abdullah Uni, Naiku was from Sopor and had evaded arrest since 2008. Police accuse him of killing two sisters in the northern Sopor town back in 2011. According to them, the security forces launched an operation on Friday morning following a tip-off about the presence of a wanted LET commander who is hiding in a village in the area. The security forces were fired upon from a house where the Al-Badr terrorist was hiding. A search was immediately launched for the second terrorist who was on the run. Now we shift focus to another shocking case of crime against women in India, this time from a village uh, Bahpat in pole-bound Uttar Pradesh, which is in northern India. Let's take a look at this detail in this report. The new year began with these shocking CCTV images from Bengaluru in southern India. A young woman brazenly assaulted as she walked towards her home. Now, barely 70 kilometers from the national capital, there's another shocking assault. Four men chopped off this woman's ears, allegedly, as she objected to their rape attempt. As in Bengaluru, in Bahpat too, Questions are being asked about police laxity. The girl's family as well as activists are claiming that the police were slow to act. A probe is now underway. The sexual violence on women seems to become, become the norm across India, not just in any one uh, state or city. And the case at Bhagpat is atrocious because the woman resisted and these men have cut off her ears because they know that nobody is going to file any case on them. The incident comes ahead of crucial elections in Uttar Pradesh. Mindful of its impact, the local MP is in a denial mode. The incident happened on the 4th of January. Police, as of now, is treating this case as a case of dispute between two families. Sana Khan, we on. All right, with that, we're taking a very short break here on Your World Tonight. Be back with lots more news and updates.